Hi, I'm Jennifer Filzen, and I would love to welcome my second guest of our brand new talk show series, Connecting with Jennifer Filzen, Wally Kassebaum, who I met through friends, Robert and Barbara Henderson. And this is a fun little project where we take a deeper cut, just getting to connect with other humans. Um, fortunately, Wally and I just started working together doing some fun things for our joint clients in marketing world. But he is so fun and we had a lot of things in common, so I thought it would be fun to ask him my four questions of connecting with Jennifer Filzen. For those of you who are brand new, because it's a brand new thing that we're doing, our four questions are, what makes you special and unique? Who in the world do you serve? What is your why? And the bonus question is, do you have any advice for our listeners? So let's just get to know each other and welcome Wally. Yay! Hey. <laughs> Hi out there in uh, video land. Right, right. So tell us where you're located and, and who you are in the world. Yeah, I'm um, located near St. Louis, Missouri, but I'm actually in Illinois, and I'm not sure I want to claim either one of them at this point, but uh, that's... <laughs> If I get on my roof of my house and I jump up high enough, I can see the arch. So that will kind of give you an idea where, where we live. Um, awesome. I am a um, husband of nearly 45 years coming up here in June and a grandfather to 10. Wow. 10 kids. Yeah, we got three children of our own and, and each of them have three, three, and four. So, yeah. Fantastic. So let's just get right into it. What makes you special and unique? What makes me special and unique? I know it's so open-ended, isn't it? It is a, um, it is a very uh, unique question. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> what makes me special? Um, I think what it makes anyone special is their gift mix and how that gift mix relates to others. And uh, so some people may not see me as special as others do, right? <laughs> and others might see me as having special needs, but we won't go there. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love your humor. Yeah. Uh, but my, my special gift mix uh, lands on administration and helps. And so what that looks like in the business world is I love helping people. That's what energizes me. <clears throat> but then I can take that helps and I could do multiple things for somebody. I see a lot of things and how they come together. But the other thing that makes uh, the, let's just say, adds some specialty content to me <laughs> is the vast experience from which the Lord has given me. <clears throat> so over the past 50 or uh, so years. <laughs> the, oh, stop. Be proud. Hey, yeah. you know, baby boomers rock, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys have all the wealth in the world right now, so hey. Yeah. hey that's right. <laughs> and one day you'll get it. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> in these uncertain times, all bets are off the table. It's just Absolutely. crazy. But no, no, we, but, we love and respect our baby boomers. So um, my experience is in manufacturing, automobile uh, manufacturing with Chrysler Corporation. Oh, yeah? Tell with me about RV. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get back to that. Um, RV, design and manufacturing. So I was in recreational vehicles for a while. Ah. My degree's in accounting. I've co-authored a book on Y2K. Cool. I've actually had several meetings at the UN about Y2K with some different attaches. Wow. And I actually spoke with Vladimir Putin's personal lawyer about Y2K. So whether or not it was a hoax or not, it got me some notoriety. So it was fun, right? <laughs> that's have, that's yeah. really cool. You threw yeah. out some really interesting golden nuggets. All right. <laughs> Keep Elaborate, going. please. I haven't, this, I haven't this stopped one. yet. So. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. All right. I'll then, stop. Keep, keep um, going. CIO and a CEO and I think an EIEIO, somewhere in there. <laughs> um, so I've done a lot of accounting stuff, accounting <laughs> software, uh, and I transitioned into the tech world 
Uh, I'm one of the unique uh, baby boomers that can do tech and understand it. Uh, developing websites and click funnels. And I think I'm going to take the rest of the day off. <laughs> but yes, that's what makes me unique, right? <laughs> so go down any rabbit trail you want. So. Oh, how fun. Well, okay, the technology thing. So, yeah, I um, one of the reasons why I absolutely love baby boomers is you guys were the pioneers that brought us the computers. And you've been through all of the hell of, you know, the cards and all the early, early, you know, that, that movie, Hidden Figures. Uh, I love that movie. <laughs> Just watched it the other day. And yeah, yes, I actually uh, programmed in Fortran, so I know that language. I programmed nice. in several other languages as well, including COBOL to learn in case of Y2K. Right. Uh, yeah. So, and, and I remember the Y2K because I was one of the people working with my companies uh -huh. that I was dealing with, trying to make sure that they were compliant and their, yeah. their standard operating procedures were in place. And man, were we all nervous when that clock was hitting midnight and then everything was just fine. Yeah. And That's it's kind of like, theory. it's kind of like right now, it's like we're doing all these precautionary measures and we're just like, you know, we're thinking that the world's going to burn down in a big old dumpster fire. And because we took the precautions, everything's going to be fine. I mean, we'll be fine. you know, I mean, let's hope that that's knock on wood. Not that we shouldn't take things seriously. Of course, we're taking things seriously. But, you know, the, the, the best possible situation is, hey, we did all the good stuff. We, we did all the right stuff. We sounded the alarm. We worked and, and planned. And here we are. We're surviving it. And then... Uh, yeah, you, you have a really nice blend of the analytical and the, the, uh, the wanting to help. So you, you said you want to help people. What started that? What in your life really dedicated you? Because, you know, you, you have a lot. You have a great pedigree. What is it that um, drew, drove you to that? Um, now I could give you my philosophical answer. <laughs> Whatever you feel like. There are no wrong answers here. <laughs> and that'll take you down a rabbit trail that we don't have enough time for. Ah, okay. um, but I believe that everyone is born with uh, spiritual gifts. The gift of helps and administration are two of them. Um, and that's, uh, that it, I just developed it over the years as I gravitated toward those things. Um, I've always been left brain, which is why I ended up with the accounting degree. And um, I would say my biggest weakness is being able to draw a straight line without a ruler. <laughs> my, my creative brain is not as good as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Not like your husband, you know? <laughs> right? I'm super lucky that I married the guy who's super talented and artsy because I, I too am challenged with drawing stick figures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can write like nobody's business, but don't ask me to draw. <laughs> I will not make six figures with stick figures, right? <laughs> <laughs> good one. That was a good one. Good one. Yeah, so, so okay, let's, let's go into the second question then. You know, you've got these great gifts. You have this wonderful background. You, you have a lot of experience. And, and by the way, I do want to applaud you. I've, I've applauded you privately, but let's applaud you publicly. To have all this background, to have gone through all the pains and, and, and learning curves of technology, it has just grown and changed exponentially. I am constantly learning more and more about social media marketing because that's my gift and that is where I have my career. <clears throat> and it's tough. It's tough keeping up. And so there, you're right. There are a lot of baby boomers who have mentally checked out of the mm. technology stuff like, yeah. oh, no. Now, now here we are. We are in March of the 21st century in the year of 2020. So anybody who says that they're not into computers is now like, you know, a rare <laughs> thing. But like two years ago, yeah. two years ago, my 96, my 94-year-old grandmother was nowhere near Facebook and there was still resistance like, Oh, that whole Facebook thing. But now, if you're not in some form of, you know, technology, even right down to like the phone, right? Like, 
what is the term? Is it Luddite? Is that the word Luddite? When they're just like, when they're so completely, I, maybe I, I hope I'm not using a, a term incorrectly, but like <laughs> the last adopters, like the ones that would still use the rotary phone if it was available, those folks, like those yeah. are the only ones hanging on to not jumping on technology. And there are still people will tell me, <laughs> oh, that whole stuff, I don't do that. I can't, I can't do that. That's beyond me. And I'm like, well, if my 96 year old grandmother is doing it, and if our, our very, very dear friend who we call Daddy Ramon, he's 88, and he's the guy taking things apart mm. to try to figure out how they work. And yeah. do, he's learning coding so he can make his little homemade uh, robot dance. Nice. You know, uh, don't tell me your age is, is <clears throat> depriving you. It's, it's really the willingness to learn. So right. in your world, you, you bring a lot to the table. Who is it that you serve in your life and, and why? Who is it that I serve? <clears throat> Given that that's my pedigree of who I am, it's comfortable to me to serve anyone that is in my circle, whoever I touch. Um, I tend <clears throat> to probably pay more attention to uh, clients because they demand more of my time. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it converts to excellence for them, you know, going the extra mile, you know, getting up at oh dark 30 to get something done. Uh, so the client is happy. <clears throat> so who do I serve, you know, anywhere from my wife to, you know, folks like yourself. <laughs> right. Or right. And, and they all have knows? different, they all have different meanings, right? Like yeah. who we serve in our family is different from who we serve in our in our hobbies and community around that and, and our work. And so what are some of the things that you do when you're not doing the click funnels and your current business venture? What what do you like to do for fun? You mean like hobbies? Yeah, do you have those? <laughs> or did you at one to. point? I used yeah. to. And I'm thinking about taking one up. Uh, um, you know, they talk about social distancing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take up uh, fish dancing. <laughs> Going fishing. <laughs> That's cute. Fish dancing. <laughs> Unless you're hanging out with a bunch of scuba divers. And I had to think about that. Um, <clears throat> That's funny. Uh, at the end of the day, sometimes I'm, I'm worn out. So sometimes I'm in the cycle of reading books. Right now we just started a 2,000 piece puzzle, which is we haven't done puzzles in years. And so we started with a 2000 piece puzzle. Um, wow. You know, play games with, with my wife. We like to play games. And, you know, we like, we got friends we hang out with, but, uh, and, but <clears throat> usually it's um, my children and, and grandchildren. And they uh, take up a lot of time, huh? Who they do, six of whom are here and four are in California. But um, every Sunday night, we always have a family gathering Aww. with, uh, you know, the kids. And so there's, you know, six adults and six grandkids <clears throat> running around the house. And it's like feeding an army because the kids can now eat well. Um, in fact, last Sunday, before this really cracked down, we made dinner and we delivered it to the other two kids. So they had dinner. <laughs> I was going to ask you, yeah, are you guys able to have your family dinners on Sunday? Uh, we, we, we don't anymore. Wow. I say anymore. Last Sunday was the, this past Sunday was the first Cut one. Off. Missed, but yeah. <clears throat> so, and, and that really must, I mean, that's like a, a ritual of yours. Well, I mean, even the grandkids, the youngest grandchild here said today, this must, it can't be money because usually on Sundays we go see grandma and papa and we didn't have dinner at them. And this is the four-year-old, <laughs> five-year-old, four. Wow. Um, and, and how is that affecting the kids, you know, them not being able to it, spend it time really with It is really affecting. They're very sad. You know, some of them cry. You know, when we get on FaceTime or whatever, they'll cry. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I saw a post from a friend of mine on Instagram who was having a, 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 a glut of emotions. She was sad because her kids were so sad. They were missing their friends. She was, she was, a, she was a stressed out mother who's trying to juggle her work and schooling her children and you know putting on a happy face and looking at the finances like 
she's kind of just overwhelmed with a bunch of emotions. And she said the hardest part is her, her kid's sadness mm. and navigating that because you can't lie about it. You know, you got to yeah. you know, navigate what's going on and we're all kind of in a, a weird spot. And so to be emotionally vulnerable and to share is, is a real skill. You know, some people just want to cover it up and, but she, you know, it's, it's, it's a really interesting time. So how, how are you serving the kids when that kind of thing happens? Um, the FaceTime mostly, you know, my wife is more involved in during the day when I'm working. Um, but, uh, like today she normally orders, uh, for Easter every year, her ritual is to buy all the kids swimsuits for the upcoming year. So, really? Yeah. So last night she ordered all the swimsuits to have them sent and delivered before Easter. And Do you guys have a family um, lakefront property or something? Uh, no, uh, we have a uh, driveway front property. <laughs> you throw out the uh, the slip and slide in the front yeah. yard with the sprinklers. That that was my best fun as a kid. <laughs> That that's you know have you noticed how certain old school stuff is starting to find its way back? Amazing, like they actually came out with Polaroid cameras again. Like they're coming back. Yeah, they're right. Wow. Yeah, and I, I predict that records, especially if streaming, continues to be compromised. Records have come back. My son yeah. bought a turntable and took all the records that we had here. Yeah. <laughs> and we had yeah. them. Right. And like old school stuff is kind of hey you know we'll we'll know that we're really reverting <clears> when those rotary phones come back. But but. Yeah. So, so how about, how about your wife, you and she, how are you two holding it together? You know, we're serving fine. each we, other. We, we've, uh, uh, you know, we just kind of take it in stride. Now she's been doing house projects. And again, I, in the last month I probably worked 12 hour days. And so I haven't seen a lot of her except when I go up and take a breath, my, my base, my basement, my office is in my basement. So, um, <clears throat> she typically only comes down here to say hi or, you know, throw me a snack or something, <laughs> or yeah. yell down and say dinner time. But, Here you uh, go. Uh, but I'm just about caught up with my rush stuff, so I can get back into the, you know, a normal swing. But uh, yeah, she handles it, talking to her friends and FaceTiming and reading, and you know, she's a a retired teacher. Um, gotcha. She does she does miss the physical touch of of children and others, you know. That's her nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's probably her biggest struggle, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, right. We're all, the, the huggers in mm -hmm. us, we're all like, oh, I miss people. But we're, yeah. both, we're both pretty healthy and, and um, we're, we're thankful that the, the Lord's taken care of us, you know. You know, I, I, I agree with that. Um, saw a friend <laughs> this morning who runs a little deli. So he's open <clears throat> for takeout service. And I asked how he was doing he goes you know what right now health is your biggest wealth and we're healthy yeah. Yeah. so everything is in limbo but we got our health so what can we complain about and yeah. that was a beautiful way to look at it because <laughs> um I, I, today is march 31st a lot of bills are due tomorrow the first of april mm -hmm. And uh, I was working on my fan finances this weekend, and I'm not going to lie. I was shedding a few tears <laughs> trying to figure out <laughs> how I'm going to juggle some stuff. And I've, I'm not one to go out for loans. I, I hate paying loan interest. I, I'm, I'm the kind of person, knock on wood, knock on wood, I don't like having a debt. And I'm looking at the uh, SBA cares act loans that are out there just so I can make sure that things stay afloat and I have cash reserves and I'm like okay you know so it's it's almost like you know all right plug your nose jump in the deep end yeah, yeah. and uh welcome to being a business owner in March 2020 <laughs> right but we do it because we love what we do and we love the people that we serve, right? So that kind of leads me to what is your why? What is it that gets you out of bed every day? And I know that as we age, we shift. Like, I'm sure your why when you were in your 20s is different from when you were in your 40s to where you are now. So if you don't mind, 
take us through your journey of your why. What, and, and then where are you now in this stage? <clears throat> Oftentimes you don't know what your why is until you've passed a, a bit of time. <clears throat> And I'll give you a few examples. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that I was in the automobile industry for a number of years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Back in 79, I was laid off. So I started, you know, seeking employment in the auto industry. And it led us down to Fort Worth, Texas. And that's where Volkswagen of America had their plant. Okay. On the way down there, I interviewed at a plant at AM General in Indiana. They made, used to make um, mail trucks, I think, amongst other things. Now, follow this trail. Two years after I had <clears throat> interviewed there, I turned them down. Two years after I interviewed there, they closed the doors. I was at Volkswagen of America for six years, I think. 79, 85. Yeah, six years. When I left that company, <clears throat> two years later, they closed the door. Okay. Moved to Longview, Texas. That's when I joined the RV industry, okay? I got in the RVs and I started building travel trailers. They liked my engineering background. I forgot to tell you, I was an industrial engineer for a number of years. Of course years. you were. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so that's where I get my engineering. Uh, so I was in, we were in Longview, Texas. <clears throat> and near Waco, Texas, and then I got called to California where the art, where the uh, motorhomes were made. So I was in the design and development group. <clears throat> had to test drive motorhomes sometimes, but it was, gosh, it was tough, but somebody had to do it. You know, that's a gift to help. <laughs> what can I say? <clears throat> so. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, I just <laughs> had to test drive all these yeah, RVs. Yeah. <laughs> we used to. like, that's funny. Side note. We, yeah. we lived a half a month, half an hour from Disneyland. So we would take the kids, <clears throat> put them in, get an RV, take the kids, put them in there, go to Disneyland. And they were young enough that they would, you know, couldn't last all day. So we'd go in and play for a couple hours, come back out to the motor home, have lunch, take a nap, go back in for a couple hours. You know, it was brilliant. Really? It, it, yeah, that's a true story. True story. That's so, cool. I never would have thought about that. You're right. The joys of RV living. Dang. <laughs> so in 91, we really felt the call that it was time to come back home. My parents were getting older. My wife had had enough of being away from home. So we prayed about it and uh, Lord said, time to go back home. I, I hadn't done my degree yet. I was on the 25 year program for, or the 20 year program for college degree. <clears throat> but I got accepted at uh, the local college here, Southern Illinois University. So we moved back here, back to Illinois in 91. And uh, by the time I finished school, guess who closed the doors? Oh, no. Fleetwood, one of the largest RV makers, had closed their corporate offices and, and just shut things down. What are you putting in their water, Wally? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So my why is leave the place before they, <laughs> before they crash. Oh my God. <laughs> so, that is funny. So, oh, you have uh, such a great sense of humor. A word that to is you hilarious. Is, is don't yeah, let yeah, me yeah beware. Me. If you're going to hire Wally. <laughs> don't, don't let me leave you because your, your business will go under in two Careful, years. Careful. You may not want to have people work with you. They might be like, oh, shit. You know? No. I'm, I can be, uh, I'll be their uh, insurance. As long as I'm there, they're good. Oh my God. That they're good. So, so <clears throat> anyway, um, <laughs> my why has followed my, my passions <clears throat> because when I came back here, I got my degree in accounting and uh, <clears throat> I started helping people do accounting stuff. And one guy says, you should really go on the road and do this when I was helping him. You ought to start doing that yourself, which I did but I gravitated to computers. So I got pretty good at computers. So I could talk accounting ease with the CPAs and I could talk tech talk with the computer guys and I became a computer guy and, you know, but I followed my talents. The gifts and talents that the Lord gave me is what I followed. 
And when I use them to help others, I'm going, hey, I'm pretty good at this. You know, people like when I do this for them. The other thing I learned along the way is that the Lord's given me patience to, uh, to work with people that are challenged. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean some take more coaching than others, but the no, Lord's given me you know, grace to do that. It's true. Yeah, We're yeah. all beginners at some point, and then we become intermediates, and then we become all stars, and then we become champions. Yeah, it, it's it's a learning curve, and we're all somewhere on that curve. As much as so, we'd like to be at the highest point of the curve, sometimes we just aren't there yet. So I'll give you my formula. Here's okay. my formula. Typically in the mornings, I uh, I have a prayer time, reading the Bible and studying, but I'm always seeking what the Lord would have me do and who I can bless this day. And I've always figured out, and I've got about six journals full of notes that I've taken over the years. And um, that's who I've blessed. The people that have been most grateful are the ones that I end up working with because the Lord's just led me there. And um, so that's that's been my secret. It's just using... <clears throat> Using your gifts and talents and making money at the same time, that's success. So true. So true. And, and in your experience, <clears throat> let's talk about success. Because you're right, we all have different ways that we define success. And a lot of times in our American society, success equates financial stability, financial independence, <laughs> and sometimes, like my friend Isidro told me, health is your wealth right now because it doesn't matter if you're famous or rich or, you know, uh, well-known or yeah. not known at all. Your health is your biggest thing. So, so yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up of, of, yeah, you've crafted a career that you love and you're helping people. And you happen to be making money off of that. That's, that's really yeah. cool. Now, I know that you do click funnels, but like if yeah. you could explain just so people understand what it is that you do right now, um, just tell us what you do. Gosh, again, I'm still do a myriad of things. I, I have never, even when I worked on the assembly line, I hated doing the same thing every day. I, I couldn't do it. So I became a floater so that every day I did something different. I get it. <clears throat> and I'm still in that mode. I do not like to do the same thing every day. So for the last 48 hours, I've been uh, finishing a website that I started for a lawyer down in Florida. Uh, prior to that, I, for the week, I was building a click funnel, and I can explain that if you want a click funnel for a client who's launched one of his uh, free, free book launches. Uh, but I'm also uh, developing a funnel for a client who is uh, launching some new products that he has in the RV industry. And uh, what else? Um, developing webinars for people, putting them uh, live so they can do what we're doing right here. Um, so there's a, gosh, there's a number of things that, that I'm doing uh, that keeps me busy. But, yeah. Nice. <clears throat> and really, when you boil it down to it, you are bringing the technology side of connecting people to businesses. I am. And, but see, what they never know up front <clears throat> is the 40 years of experience that I bring on the table. Until they start asking questions or if I, <clears throat> until I start saying, have you considered this? They'll look at me and say, how do you know that? <laughs> I'm going, well, <laughs> you really want to know? So when somebody yeah. hires me, they're getting a lot that they don't really know about until I start. Because that's not who I I don't bill myself as a know-it-all because I don't know it all. But if it comes to a point where I can help you and I've known it before, I've done it before and got the t-shirt, I'll help you. <laughs> and that is cool. One thing that I did notice when I first met you, you sent me the link to your ClickFunnels video mm -hmm. and I hadn't even spoken to you yet. We'd only done emails. And I noticed your beautiful face with your beautiful hair and your beautiful mustache. And you don't look like most of the kids selling click funnel stuff. <laughs> Usually That's it's true. some young, brash, 
uh, poses with an expensive vehicle in the driveway, kind of youngin. Yeah. And and I was like, wow, we've got a baby boomer doing this. This is kind of impressive because you stand out. It's like, oh, hello. And because of that, I was, I had, and again, please know that this is said with love. There were two things that my marketing mind was like, oh, well, this is interesting. You know, the, que the first question was, is he really that savvy? And then the second thought was, if he is that savvy, holy crap. Yeah. Right? Because I, I, I could see that you would bring some knowledge to the table because you stood out. You're not that young kid with the giant watch, you know, you know, you want to make $10,000 a month. I mean, this is all good stuff, but like, I just feel like I'm constantly being hit up by a bunch of young guys who are full of testosterone, who are like trying to help me with the get rich quick scheme. I know that click funnels are not like that. That's a very uh, measured and tactical uh, marketing tool that people can use and I'm going to use that with you as well, which I'm super excited about. I think but, we should explain what that is. Yeah, please do. Please do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll explain it like this. Most people know what a website is. When you go to a website, you often see multiple choices, whether it's uh, lotions or potions or services or whatever. There's multiple choices on a website. Whereas a click funnel focuses on usually one service or one product. Now, whether it's um, <clears throat> health and beauty or whether it's, um, again, it could be supplements or could be service, whatever, parts for cars and things like that. It's typically focused on one product. And the typical scenario is there's going to be an offer. And sometimes, and most times, it's a free offer. And in exchange for that offer, they're, you're gonna, they're gonna ask you for an email. We're going to give you a free book for this. And usually there's value there. Okay. And then if it's done correctly, there's usually one item that they are promoting. If you like it, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. But they're just focused on one item. So you, you've got their attention and they're going to potentially buy that item. Whereas if they go to a website and they see five or 10 items, they sometimes get confused and say, I don't want to take the time to do that. The other unique thing is that using social media helps you choose the right person. Whereas if I go to a website and I've got five or six or whatever number of items or services you have on there, you've got a myriad of people to whom you are drawing to your website. If I'm selling one product, one service, I'm looking for one kind of individuals. And uh, I know in Facebook ad advertising, which I studied that last year, uh, probably a couple hundred hours I put in studying Facebook ads, <clears throat> that um, you can drill down and find the right individual who will come to your funnel. Yes. And, and so, yes. yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of the difference. And, and, and thank you for explaining that. And, and this is the cool thing too about marketing. You know, my, my strength is the social media marketing and telling a story and writing SEO content. Yours is, you know, the, the click funnels and, and guiding people toward that sales pipeline so you can eventually close them on that product or service. Right. And there is so, marketing is such a huge, huge discipline that marketers can all coexist and not even worry about competing because there are so many different aspects. You could be a website designer, you can be a, you know, uh, a copywriter, you can, you can uh, be a data analyst, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can specialize solely on Facebook video ads if you want, make an entire so, career out of that. Let me um, share why I think we're going to work well together. And I'm gonna do this publicly because it, it just clicked with me, as in click funneled. <laughs> <laughs> there are three elements, er, there should be three elements to every page of a click funnel. There should be a hook, a story and an offer, right? Mm -hmm. I'm really pretty good at hooks. I'm really pretty good at offers. I can write a story, but if you craft the story as well as you do, there's a match made in heaven there, right? You see what I'm saying? 
True. Every that page is so needs true. to have a book story and offer. Now, a story can be a video. It can be, you know, a written script or, or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. So a hook is something like, you know, the 15 ways to lose five pounds around your belly button or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, the story is whatever you craft. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. hook story Great. Great point. And that is some, that is some really great free advice. So if you, if you are trying to market, if you're a business owner or even if you're not the owner of a business, but you work for a company and you're collecting a paycheck, you know, what kind of hook, what kind of story and what kind of offer are you presenting to the, the clients, the people you serve, because that is going to allow you to find your target audience and develop a relationship with your tribe because you're right, like uh, I get clients asking me all the time, should I do a group on offer? I'm like, not unless you want a bunch of tire kickers. You know, if you are a boutique and you have prices up here, if you market to people on Groupon, they're gonna be expecting prices to be down here. That's correct, yeah. And you're gonna be wasting your time and money because it's not a perfect fit. You might as well just focus on making sure your message is targeting your real ideal customers. Right. And you know, this is, this brings up another point. We are in very uncertain economic times right now. Tomorrow is the first of April. And unfortunately this is not an April fool's day of what's going on with our worldwide economy. And it's just so important to make sure that you don't fall victim to the quick fix of, and this is hard, this is hard discipline. I'll take any business. Yeah. Okay, well, that might get you through, but if it's not a good fit, that relationship is going to be very short lived and probably bring some pain to you before it's over. So, even though it's tempting right <clears throat> now to take anything that you can get. Please keep your standards high and seek out those that are truly a fit with you. Like, you know, um, gosh, you know, there's unfortunately news about how domestic uh, abuse and violence issues are going up in the time of lockdown and shelter in place. Yeah. Because relationships that weren't that happy before that could survive because everyone could go hit the bar or go yeah. do what they needed to do. Now we're seeing yeah. a bit more situational, you know, adversity and, and mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's rough. And uh, you know, it's same thing. Like if you decide to hop into bed, if you will, with uh, a, a business partner or, or client that is not a good fit, you're going to be in a, in a relationship that's like this, you know, so, so keep those standards high, seek out your ideal tribe and then serve them beautifully. Go that extra mile, take care of them. And we've been doing that too. We've been doing so much COVID-19 <laughs> Uh, notification work, email blasts, social media posts, videos. We're, we've been doing a lot helping our clients for Rockstar Marketing, you know, um, get out their message like, hey, we're an essential business. We're an auto repair shop. We're open. Or, hey, I'm a, I'm a financial person and, and I can help you with your finances and keep your credit going strong, you know, during this time. I'm a business coach. You know, different Different clients are just like, I even have a client that's a winery. Yes, we will definitely sell boxes of cases of wine in these times. Like, yes, I, I'm, I'm tempted to have more wine than I normally do. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Um, okay, so I'm curious. What words of wisdom do you have to share? I mean, you've, you've lived a good, fabulous life. You've seen some ups and downs. What would you just say, say to people who, and we're all in unprecedented times, like nobody that I know who's ever been, who's, who's alive currently has ever seen this kind of thing happen. What words of wisdom would you like to impart? What words of wisdom? Who's my audience? And I'll tell you. <laughs> Ooh, you get to design it. I get to design it. Sure. Pass the ball back here. 
Well, to the business owner, if there's one thing that has carried me through, that is integrity. Every person is given one chip of integrity, as I call it, and you only get it once. And if you lose that chip in a, in a communication, in a, in a relationship with a business owner, or anyone else for that matter, um, you have lost a big chunk of who you are. So integrity in my book means doing what you say you're going to do when you're going to do it. Yep. Now, people don't care about if you miss deadlines. If you tell them, you say, look, I told you I was going to have it done on Wednesday. Something came up. It's not going to be till Thursday. Those are not the issues. The issues is being upfront and, and doing what you're saying you're going to do. Right. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the biggest thing that's going to, that's going to pull you through. Secondly, yeah. back to your point about you don't take the, the lower level, you know, jobs or whatever. What you can do is instead of lowering your cost, increase your value. So if you normally charge $100 for a job and people think, think it's too expensive, add some more value. Increase it with either giving them a, a book to read or something that creates more value for that 100 bucks that you still get the $100. And that'll keep you going. The third thing from a personal standpoint, pray. If there's one thing in that keeps me going and motivated is prayer. But prayer is not effective unless, um, unless you know the one to whom you are praying. Let's put it that way. And those are my secrets and those are my recommendations. And that's who I am. I love it. Wally, you are such a treasure. Such a treasure. Oh my gosh. I'm really glad I started this connecting with Jennifer Phils in the series. I mean, my first guest was um, Carlita Raffoli, who is a West Coast swing dance legend, and he's 85. So he had some beautiful golden nuggets. Your guest number two, you've dropped some beautiful golden nuggets. And I just, I love it because what we did was we went deep quickly. How mm -hmm. often have we seen, you know, surface, surface conversation that, you know, you yeah, really, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, how's the weather? You know, what we're not, we're, and we, and, and it's funny, I, I grew up in Florida, right? And uh, I'm a fifth generation Floridian and we definitely have, you know, ancestors who fought in the civil war and fought in the revolutionary war. And like, you know, and in the South, the rule is you don't talk politics. You don't talk religion because you just don't know. And you talk about the weather because everyone right. could talk about the weather. Right. Yeah. And, and so often um, we do talk about, we have to talk about certain things because we need to have public discourse, but I agree with you. I think prayer, whatever that looks like for you and for whatever you're, who you are praying to or, it, there's so much beautiful stuff going on in our world. We, we tend to focus on the negative, but I'm seeing a lot of positivity coming out of even these times, how we're connecting. And so I just appreciate that you went deep with me and you shared who you are. So we could be better connected personally, you and me, but then and I didn't tell you too. all the secrets, all the good stuff. <laughs> ah, man. <laughs> Maybe that's going to have to be like another version, like Maybe. Dirty Laundry with Jennifer Phils. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> then you're going to end up being on TV or something in one of these talk shows. <laughs> right? I know. We don't want to say anything that would prevent us from, from running for political office in the future, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Coming well. up with silly stuff. But no, truly, thank you so very, very much for sharing who you are, for doing what you do in the world, for... Uh, being a beacon of hope and uh, and wisdom and service and integrity because you really are a gem. Thank you so very much. Thank, right. you, Thank you, everybody who has joined me and Wally today. Thank you for hanging in there and listening to us chat. And I hope you, you felt a little deeper connection. And we'll see you next time. Yay! Bye. -bye. <laughs>